Hi, welcome to a new episode uh, from Neopedia. Today we're going to talk about the persistent pulmonary hypertension and the use of uh, inhaled nitric oxide. We'll try to uh, stick again to the practical points and uh, I hope this will be useful. So uh, the definition of PPHN is basically is failure of the normal postnatal fall in the pulmonary vascular resistance which will cause uh, right to left shunt and poor oxygenation uh, where you will find the uh, um, uh, oxygen, oxygen partial pressure less than 6 kilopascal uh, in 100% oxygen. So uh, to understand that, just a brief uh, talk about the fetal circulation. So as you can see uh, in this uh, in this diagram basically so uh, that uh, the oxygenated blood uh, uh, is uh, um, received from the placenta through the uh, umbilical vein uh, into the heart so the lungs basically are collapsed bilaterally and the oxygenated blood will pass bypass the lungs through the PFO, uh, the patent formula oval, and the uh, and the PDA, basically. Uh, so th what happened at birth, basically, uh, that the uh, pulmonary vascular resistance as the lungs expands will fall, and this is ideally what should happen, but unfortunately sometimes uh, due to some uh, reasons, which we're going to talk about in the next slide, uh, this doesn't happen. So, uh, the main causes uh, for the PPHN is actually idiopathic, so we don't know sometimes why it's happening, and most of the uh, time we see it uh, with some uh, as a secondary result of uh, severe lung disease uh, caused by meconium aspiration or surfactant deficiency. Uh, it can be caused also by perinatal asphyxia, HIE cases, and infection. The other thing also is the structural abnormalities which can happen, uh, like congenital diaphragmatic hernia or uh, congenital cystic uh, adenomatoid malformation of the lung or pulmonary hyperplasia. As it can be also related to maternal, maternal drug use like aspirin uh, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, so how it will present usual presentation within the first 12 hours of life where you will find uh, a reduced uh, uh, oxygen saturations uh, less than 95 percent even in 100 percent oxygen uh, could be some respiratory signs if there is a, a, a lung pathology uh, or you can listen uh, when you listen to the heart you can auscultate a, a murmur of tricuspid regurg basically uh, and uh, you can see also uh, features of underlying disease like for example sepsis. So uh, the main uh, uh, investigation uh, so we're going to talk about is basic things really uh, like blood gas which again will show you uh, hypoxemia and uh, the uh, saturation monitor it's really important to monitor both pre and post ductal saturations so the uh, pre ductal sats you can use all the right hand and for the post ductal sat you can use either of the lower limbs that should be all right and if there is any difference more than five percent so that's significant uh, chest x-ray might show you variable things if there is a lung, uh, lung pathology then you can notice that on the x-ray but sometimes it will be completely free uh, x-ray uh, if we do also a ECG uh, so sometimes you can find tall P wave uh, uh, and uh, lead to V1, V2 or uh, features of right ventricular hypertrophy uh, the echo it's not really essential to have an echo if you have the clinical picture you should suspect uh, pphn uh, uh, but the echo is really helpful uh, uh, so if you are working in a unit where there is an echo uh, 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 skilled uh, person really who can help uh, that will be useful because you can assess the pulmonary pressures so basically uh, the heart is trying to pump the blood against this high resistance of pulmonary vascular bed. 
so uh, uh, if it's trying that hard so basically the backflow from the uh, pulmonary artery should be high and this will reflect on the uh, tricuspid regurgitation basically so you'll, you will have a high uh, speed or high velocity uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation uh, the echo also is important because you can differentiate between uh, uh, congenital heart disease and uh, a PPHN because both of them can present in a very similar way. Uh, so basically, uh, if you have more, uh, if you have one or more uh, of these, as we said, significant tricuspid regurgitation or right ventricular hypertrophy, or uh, a right to left shunt, uh, 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 which can be noted in the PDA or the PFO. So that all goes with the um, uh, uh, PPHN. Uh, so the management. So this triad of management really is really important to remember. So first thing, if you have this uh, uh, presentation, out of hours, for example, uh, you need to inform your consultant immediately. That's one of the serious presentation in, in, in neonatal practice, to be honest. And if you're not working in a, in a unit which can provide echoes, and if you're suspecting congenital heart disease at the same time, so you can start prostaglandin infusion also. Just main, the main thing really is to keep the baby safe until you establish the diagnosis. So, uh, the main uh, aspects of this management uh, is to treat the underlying condition. So, for example, if it's infection, you need to treat that. If it's congenital diaphragmatic hernia, you need to surgically treat that. Okay, and you just need to follow your local guideline. The other thing is you're trying to reduce your uh, pulmonary vascular resistance. And this will happen through the use of oxygen, which is a, a vasodilator. Uh, itself and you might need to use nitric oxide as we're going to say uh, uh, to discuss in the, in the next few slides the other thing you need to make sure that you maintain your systemic pressure above the pulmonary pressure so simply your body blood pressure should be more than your pulmonary otherwise you won't be able to push this blood against the high uh, resistance of the vascular bed so the main aspects of the management so abc again so the airway you need to intubate ventilate and what's really important you need to sedate and paralyze because this will allow effective ventilation and you might need to give surfactant uh, in some uh, cases like uh, meconium aspiration the uh, B uh, part, which is basically the ventilation settings. So usually we're starting these uh, babies on conventional ventilation, and usually you start in 100% and then try to wean gradually the oxygen if you are maintaining your uh, saturations between 96 and 100%. And also if your gas is reflecting a uh, 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 good uh, partial pressure of your oxygen. 10 to 12 uh, kilopascal. You need to consider also high frequency uh, in case if your oxygen uh, oxygenation index is more than 15 and uh, I've just the form you can find the formula in green down there and also you need to maintain your systemic blood pressure more than the pulmonary pressure. So you need central lines and you need uh, to maintain your systemic mean between 50 to 60 and systemic systolic blood pressure 60 to 70 millimeter mercury unless your echo tells you uh, uh, because the echo is going to estimate your uh, pulmonary pressure through uh, a special formula using the tricuspid regurgitation velocity uh, uh, you need to follow these numbers up there so uh, coming to the nitric oxide so if you have still high oxygenation index more than 20 and if the baby is more than 34 weeks and there is no congenital heart disease you might follow this diagram so start at 10 parts per million if there is no response increase it to the maximum which is 20 parts per million there is no evidence that higher uh, 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 concentration of nitric oxide give you any different uh, different response so if there is a good response which means that the saturation jumped more than 20 percent uh, or the blood gas show you an in increase in oxygen more than three kilopascal within 15 minutes after starting the nitric oxide so that's a good response uh, if if things maintain well uh, for 
uh, four hours you can start weaning gradually if your oxygen requirements less than 50 percent you can wean from 20 for example down to five parts per million uh, by five part per million every one to two hours and when you reach five part per million so you can wean by one part per million uh, 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 every one to two hours uh, so basically you need to leave the nitric oxide circuit for six hours after stopping and uh, if things are all right then you can uh, disconnect the circuit for the next step which will be the ecmo uh, if the uh, baby is more than 34 weeks and or more than two kilogram you can consider ecmo if your oxygenation index is still high but you have a reversible lung disease uh, actually and also there is no lethal congenital malformation thank you very much please feel free to ask any question uh, uh, in the comment section thank you